Hello, ChaosCon 2022. I'm Kaylee Champion. I'm a PhD candidate in communication at the University of Washington. Today, I'm going to be talking about collaboration networks and project health. So how is it that some of our most important pieces of software, our shared digital infrastructure, falls into disrepair and neglect? Today, I'd like to give you an update on some work I shared with you at last ChaosCon, including some emerging results from my dissertation. This is a true work in progress. New results were emerging all the time. I'm eager for feedback. Uh, so we might hope that the software we rely on the most would also be the best quality, but that's not always the case. Some components we depend on can be neglected. That's a phenomenon called underproduction. This sketch shows how we might think about underproduction, this relationship between the supply of high quality software and the demand for that software in the form of importance. When quality is high but importance is low, we would call that overproduction, not a problem other than the potential for wasted effort. Alignment, we've got a match between quality and importance, that's the ideal case. Uh, and we have a particular concern when software is heavily used but relatively low quality. That's a problem. That's underproduction, importance is high, quality is low. So this heat map shows some underproduced packages, kind of those at-risk components I identified, doing a study of Debian Linux. Those are all kind of at the bottom here. And what I'll be showing you today is all about these factors that seem to be associated with this underproduced software. But I'd be happy to chat with you further about how I found these at-risk packages to begin with. All right. So we might have a few ideas about how important software comes to be neglected. And you'll see I've included spoilers, uh, green check when the evidence is leaning toward the conclusion, red X when so far my evidence is against this conclusion. All right, so one theory about how things become underproduced is decay. Uh, maybe it's old, written in an old language, written a long time ago. Another might be just raw resources, uh, just not enough people power behind it. Uh, maybe it has people, but they're not a well-organized kind of strong community in some respects. Maybe the people uh, supporting the software have become isolated in some way. Other folks in the kind of broader maintenance community don't realize what's going on or they just don't feel they would be welcome to pitch in. All right. So underproduced packages do indeed seem to be written in older languages, especially these pre-1980 languages, uh, Lisp, C, I'm looking at you. Um, however, packages written in the 1980s still can be, uh, from languages written in the 1980s, can still be underproduced. Uh, packages written in language languages from 1990 and beyond can still also be underproduced. And we see real differences uh, between languages. So Lisp does very well, actually, if we break it out from its other kind of pre-1980s cousins. Um, on the other hand, we see C++ doing a little bit worse than Perl these days in terms of the how usage of the packages written in this language compare to the importance of those packages. Python and Java seem to do uh, about the same as one another, um, but still a little bit of an area for concern. All right. So the age of the language is not the only factor to consider. There's also when the package itself was written. Languages change through time, so do packages. Um, so this looks at when the package was added to Debian versus the kind of era that the language it was written in originates from. So what we see is underproduction kind of characterizing packages that have been in Debian for a long time and then falling off as more recently as the package was added more recently. That said, some of these 1980s languages like Perl, C++, um, seem to be doing relatively, rec uh, relatively worse in recent decade. Okay, so another suggestion that we might make for explaining underproduction is um, all about the size of the maintainer community. Uh, but I found an interesting result here. If we just count the number of maintainers, just unique entries in the maintainers field, having one unique entry seems to outperform larger groups. Uh, and that's a little bit concerning. Um, but when we kind of divide maintainership uh, into styles, we see a couple different distinctions. Um, just taking that unique approach is not enough. Uh, because a unique maintainer can be a single person, or it could be a pseudonym of a, a larger group of folks, maybe a subgroup within Debian, the games team, um, the sort of utilities team, or what have you. 
many different individuals might be pitching into the package, might be a little bit willy nilly, um, or it might be a, a mix of a group as well as some individuals. So we need to break apart these numbers just a little bit more to, so they can make some sense for us. So these are the four categories I'm using right now. Uh, solo, team, loose, uh, no group, uh, mixed, that's a mix of group and individuals. And I'm identifying groups based on whether or not it's a mailing list uh, versus an individual uh, email address that's listed as the maintainer contact. And that's a kind of typical within Debian to use a mailing list or use an individual. All right, so if we break it apart based on that maintainership style. Uh, we see that loose, um, organize it loosely organized groups do poorly compared to the other styles. Although um, kind of this mix of individuals and groups does not necessarily do better. Um, maybe a little bit uh, solo does substantially better and team does substantially better. And one thing to point out here is that packages in Debian do vary in size uh, from very small to very large, which might explain some of the distinctions we see here. All right. So digging in a little bit further on these kind of loose collections of individuals versus the mixed model where it's um, individuals as well as groups kind of taking on maintainership role. If we use a market share perspective about who's serving as the maintainer, what their kind of duration is of maintainership, we can think about um, that market share as having a kind of inequality. Maybe somebody kind of has owned the package for most of its life, but occasionally other people's people kind of pitch in uh, versus lots of kind of different folks, a rotating cast of characters serving as the, the maintainer. And what we see is that um, underproduced packages in kind of this bluish greenish color here are um, characterized by kind of more equality in leadership. What's this mean? That means we don't have a single kind of strong leader kind of taking the maintainership role for long periods of time. Instead, it's handing off between different folks. Uh, and we see the same result here between the loose model and the mixed model. So leadership counts, leadership matters uh, is how I would kind of conclude from here. Next up, my last angle of attack is collaboration networks. So Debian is a network of folks who work together. People might contribute in one place or in several places. And when they close bugs in multiple packages, we might think of that as forming a network, drawing packages that share contributors closer together, pushing those with no people in common further apart. And this kind of messy example is five packages with the word mutt in the name. Mutt and Neo Mutt right here are close together, uh, which is not surprising because one is a fork of the other. The picture gets a little bit clearer if we drop out the people and leave only the packages that their work draws together. And framing bug closure as a network lets us bring out a lot of network analysis measures. Thinking back to those two categories of struggling packages, loose and mixed, we see in both cases, instead of being helpful, uh, as we proposed, being centrally located, closely related to other packages by means of sharing the same people is a predictor for underproduction. And I'm thinking of this as a sign that these projects are essentially drawing water from a shared well. The more they share folks with others, the more we perhaps see maintainers who as individuals are just too thinly spread. All right, so where are we at right now? My observation so far is that there are multiple paths to success. Modern technology helps, but it's not a guarantee. And some communities with aging technology stacks do better than the average. Organizations help, but individuals can do quite well. And taking the lead can make a big difference when many people are pitching in, unless that lead person is spread too thinly. So what are my next steps? I'm continuing to refine these measurements, building models to try to control for different factors, working to validate these results with communities like you, uh, under, sort of unpacking these sources of underproduction through time. I have some real chicken and egg problems here. Um, the question is, do these kind of factors predict underproduction or are they a consequence of underproduction? To sort that out, I really need to spread this data through time. I am seeking support to continue this work and I am always looking to collaborate. Please connect with me. I'm eager for your questions and ideas and I'll see you on the stream. Bye.